Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Good morning. We're glad you guys are here. Go ahead and stand up. We're going to go ahead and get started with singing. that you're here with us this morning here at Catalyst. We're so glad that you chose to spend your time with us because we know in the Montgomery area, there are a lot of other places. You drove past a lot of really great churches just to get to here. So we're glad that you guys um, 
that you came here. You even passed a church like in the parking lot. There's like another church going on here at this campus. So we're glad that you chose to walk all the way here to Goodwin Hall. We love you guys. We're glad you're here. If you would at this time, go ahead and take out the handout that you received when you walked in the door and pull out this connection card. There's a connection card inside of the handout. Take a second right now while I'm talking to fill it out. If this is your first time or if you've been here for 20 times, we would love for you guys to fill this out. This helps us to answer any questions that you may have about Catalyst, but it also lets us know that you were here and it gives us a chance to pray for you. If um, on the back, if you've got something specific you want prayer for, go ahead and write that down. Your staff counts it a huge honor to pray for you. So go ahead and um, write that down and uh, let us know if you've changed anything. Also, if, you're, if, you're, if you've been here for the past year with Catalyst, that's right. Almost a year. <laughs> so that's really exciting. So if you've been here and you, um, if you've changed something, maybe a new cell phone or whatever, let us know. We want to we make sure we've got that updated. Um, there's a lot of information in the handout uh, that you received when you walked in. A lot of stuff about small groups. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here at Catalyst. But tonight, don't want to miss this, the night of worship, which is happening right here in this room tonight at 6.30 um, we're going to have this stage packed out with people and also with gear, lots and lots of big black speakers and other things, um, a piano, and we're going to have a lot of fun, and we're going we're gonna to make much of, of Christ tonight because um, that's why we, we feel like we should be here together and worshiping together and making much of God. So we want you guys to come. We want you to bring your friends. There should be some of these in your, in your handout that you can hand to someone, maybe even today at lunch. You've still got plenty of hours to invite somebody. So don't don't think, oh, it's too late. I've already missed a chance. I should have talked to him a week ago. You still have time. A lot of people will come if you just ask. Um, we are in our second week of ghost stories, and it's not like, woohoo, scary ghosts, but it's like the Holy Ghost. Um, and so we're very excited today. We get to learn about um, what the Holy Spirit does. Um, we get to hear about the things that he does do and the things that he doesn't do. And so I'm excited to hear about that and how the Holy Spirit can work in our lives. Um, this week, actually, I've had an opportunity to um, listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit told me to do something. And I was like, that's kind of, but that, that's, if, you, if I have to do that, I'm, it's going to make it harder for me. Or it's going to be weird for me. Or what, what are they going to think of me if they know I did it kind of thing. But it's funny when you have a chance to obey the Holy Spirit, it totally washes away all those weird feelings. Those weird feelings go away. So I'm excited to hear what Matt's going to say about that. Um, and so we're glad you're here. If you would, at this time, go ahead and stand up and talk to somebody next to you. Say hi. Give them a high five, maybe a little side hug action, and just say hey.
church. tells us that in his presence is fullness of joy. And, and joy is not just smiling happy all the time. Joy is hope and trust and the idea that there is something greater and better in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trial. And I know that you guys are having trials because I'm having trials. We all have trials. That's what this world is. We're not meant for this world. So when we're here, we're going to have trouble. But God gives us the Holy Spirit to indwell with us, to go through our day, to be with us, to help us speak the right words, the words of encouragement to someone, or, or help us not to say words that would hurt someone. The Holy Spirit is our hope. So that's what this song is about. And this song is about the idea of the Holy Spirit. But, but in order for the Holy Spirit to be here, we have to be welcome to it, which means we have to say, okay, God, this is who I am, but I want what you have for me. I want the Holy Spirit to dwell. I want to give me to the Holy Spirit. Because otherwise, the Holy Spirit and I are going to always be like this. The Holy Spirit's going to be trying, and I'm going to be trying, and we're going to always be fighting each other. And you'll never have peace with that. We have to be welcome to it. We have to ask him to rule and reign. So think about that while we sing this. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can come.
we know you're here because your word says when two or three are gathered in your name, you're with us, you're here. And God, that's what we've done. We've come here today to gather in the mighty name of Jesus, to lift high the cross. God, we've come here because we all wanna know more of you. We wanna know what fullness of joy is. And God, we recognize that you're the only way to receive that. You're the only answer to that question. And so God, we thank you for, for being here. We thank you for being faithful when we call on you. We thank you that you can even stand to be in our presence. We thank you that you allow us the experience of you. God, we love you, and we ask you to reveal to us something new about you this morning. Help us to grow together and help us to grow closer to you. Amen. You may be seated. How's everybody doing this morning? Give these guys a hand if you would. They... They faithfully lead us every week to the Lord's presence. And uh, I want to just have you look at somebody next to you and ask them a question. Ask them, do you want more? Just ask somebody. Do you want more? Just ask them. Let me tell you what we're talking about today. We're talking about this idea that, that the Holy Spirit of God um, is God's plan. It's, his, it's God's, the Bible says, his indwelling presence. Like, What does that even mean? It means that, that God himself, Megan mentioned, that Christ came and died for us, and, and he said, I will send my Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of believers, people that are Christ followers, and the Holy Spirit is literally God's presence with us. Um, we're going to talk this morning about the way things were in the Old Testament, the left-hand side of your Bible, the Old Covenant. And then now under the New Covenant, we're talking about how the Holy Spirit interacts with us. But I just want to tell you things today that, that the Holy Spirit is better than the old plan. Anybody agree with that? Um, I'll tell a story on, on, on myself today. Uh, if, you're, if you've ever been in ministry, Sundays are long days. Anybody ever like, taught Sunday school or been real involved in church? Sundays are just long days. You get done with Sundays, and there's a book written by a pastor that says, don't quit on Monday. The, the, literally, this book, this whole book, and it's like a bestseller because all the pastors are like, it's Monday, and I'm going to quit. Because like, it's, it's funny. Satan like, beats up on you on Monday mornings, and it's kind of like the average person's like Saturday morning. Like You're done. You're so wiped out from the week. But for in, in ministry, Sunday is kind of the big day. And so Monday morning, and, and nothing particularly, like last week was a great week. A lot of good things were happening. We had the, um, this series started, and then we're looking for this night of worship. But you just kind of get up on Monday mornings, and you're just kind of wiped. Y'all, feel that, y'all may feel that way, too, even if you're not preaching. But you just kind of get up tired. And so to make things even better, typically on Monday mornings, I will, um, I'm in a unique place on Sunday nights. I'm really, really tired, but I can't sleep. You ever been there before? And you're wiped out, you're like, I want to sleep so bad. And it's like everything in your house is like ten times louder than usual. Like you hear crickets in your neighbor's yard and the board's settling. And so I'm laying in bed Sunday night and then I realize, sorry, crap, my car's at AUM. Jamie and I have left our car on campus. So I'm like, oh, I can't sleep in the morning. I don't need to be stranded all day at my house. So I get up that morning, and Wes and Megan and I have a, a scheduled meeting on Monday mornings where we get together, and we are uh, pretty vicious about this service. We critique it. Um, we, uh, what we, we ask, I think, four questions. What was excellent? And who gets credit? That's a fun question to answer. Here's the next one, number three question. What was not excellent? And who gets credit? That's really fun questions to answer. And, and so we review and, uh, and so we typically meet at 9, and so Monday morning, uh, Jamie has to come to work at 8. So I'm here, tired, and I get my car, and then I, I'm, I'm just going to go to Starbucks. And this is what's really strange about the Holy Spirit. On the way to Starbucks, we meet at the Starbucks on Vaughn Road in front of Publix. Um, I'm sitting there, and on the way, the Lord says to me, this is crazy how God speaks to me, um, there's a song you need to listen to. Just kind of how God talks to me. I'm like, okay. And I've got my computer, and I pull up YouTube, and it's a video of a song. The, the guy's name's Aaron Keys, and he wrote a song called Trust You, Jesus. I don't know if you've ever heard the song or not. You may or not. You're, you're going to hear it tonight. Um, we're going to do it tonight. But I don't listen to this song often. Um, but it's this, this video of, 
uh, this guy that's a worship leader sitting at his piano, and they've got this like little, little mini worship concert going on at his house. It's all these worship leaders, and they've got the band mic. It's just kind of this earthy, organic feeling thing. And, and I'm sitting there in Starbucks. I'm like, Lord, why am I watching this song? Is this a song you want us to teach the folks at Catalyst? Is it a song that you want me to blah, 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 blah? And the Holy Spirit says, no, this song is for you. And I sat there and lost all control of myself at Starbucks. And it was not pretty. I'm sitting over there at the big table, the center table of the whole room, next to all the baristas. And I am bawling my friggin' eyes out. I am just weeping. And I'm like, oh, they all see me. And I'm trying to do the, like, look away thing. And they're like, I see them. They're like, they're like look at the guy crying over there. Like, all nudging. I'm like, oh, Lord. And people are coming in that I know. I'm like, hey, good to see you. you know? and, and it's like... It's like in the middle of a, a big old room of people, it was me and the Lord. And the Lord was just ministering to my heart. I sent Megan a, a text. I said, y'all need to watch this song. And we had this joke whenever we cry that our allergies are acting up. And Megan's like, my allergies are acting up too. And, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit, Megan talked about this indwelling presence of God. The Holy Spirit does things that you and I can never do. He knew that I needed a moment with him. He knew that. And he knew that I needed to be reminded to trust Jesus. And he knew that this song touches my heart, and it's beautiful, and you're going to see it tonight, and I hope you have your Starbucks moment too. The, the point of today is that, that you and I, there are things that God's going to call us to do. If you're in your own power, you will never, ever do them. And I just want you to understand this. I, this, is not, this, is, this is me as a friend talking to you as friends and wanting you to understand this. We talked last week about the idea of uh, there's an upgrade available. We talked about the idea of old bag phones versus new smartphones. And some of you guys are not on smartphones. You're on you know, a flip phone or whatever. But, but know this. Whatever phone you have, if you have one, is better than a bag phone. We talked about bag phones were uh, large and they had poor reception. The first ones had no internal battery. They had to be plugged into the, the, the cigarette lighter of the car. Um, people loved driving Fords back in the day because Fords had a, a battery trickle that ran all the time. So you'd see people on a Ford that wasn't running, using their, their back phone. If you didn't have a Ford, you would run your car to run your back phone. Most expensive power ever, your gas is burning so you could use your back phone. We talked about how they had poor reception, how they, you paid a lot for the minutes. It wasn't unlimited. I, I checked after the sermon last week. I went back to check my rollover minutes on my phone. Does anybody even talk about rollover minutes anymore? I, I have 10,000 rollover minutes. Can I give you some rollover I'll be glad to give you some of my rollover minutes. But we, we talked about that, that, that God has given us this, uh, this upgrade that's available, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is his indwelling, ongoing, constant presence for people that are believers. That God wants to, to live inside of you and not be this spooky uncle that we talk about, like God the Father, we're cool with God the Father and God the Son, we're really great with Him, we know what He did, the Bible tells us, but we're not really sure what to do with the Holy Spirit. And so last week we, we did this bird's eye view of, of a picture of the Holy Spirit that an upgrade is available for you. If you're a person who was called on Jesus and if you know Christ, then, then God offers you, God at the moment of your salvation says this, I have given you my Holy Spirit. And for, there are people in this room that have, have learned through time to learn to listen to the Spirit and it's wonderful. The, the Spirit has, has a, a perspective that's way different than ours. You know, this band, you may not have noticed it, you may notice it, they all play with in-ear monitors. Do you ever notice little things in their ears? People are like, what are those things? That's a click. Keeps them together. Now you go, it's loud, how can they not be together? Well, when you're playing your instrument, you can't hear other instruments. Sometimes we'll do tracks and it'll go... Beginning of verse 1. There's an automated voice. You're like, oh, the verse one's coming. And then you play verse 1. It goes, now we're going to chorus. And you play the chorus. And it's this ongoing whispering. In your, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Sometimes these guys back, I'm going to give you some little technology stuff. They have a talk back mic. They can talk into a mic there that you don't hear in the room that just speaks into their ears. Just, it's, it's wonderful instruction. And what we're saying about the Holy Spirit, we, we think the Holy Spirit is this this cloudless, this, this form somewhere out there that we get a glimpse of. And I would tell you today that the Holy Spirit of God wants to be intimate with your life, wants to walk with you and instruct you and give you. You don't have to feel like God is far off because God is not far off. If you're a Christ follower, the indwelling presence of God is inside of you. So the big point of today is this, and this is our main sentence, the Holy Spirit does abundantly more than we can do on our own. Would everybody agree with that? 
Even if, even if you're not a Christ follower, even if you're a person who's like, man, I, I've heard about the Bible, you know, whatever, you, you've got to recognize you have limits, right? We all have limits. We know, only know so much. We only see so much. Uh, we're limited by time. We're limited by uh, our energies. You, you cannot stay up for forever. The Bible says that the Lord never sleeps. He never slumbers. He, he's always constant. The Bible says that, that Jesus prays for us, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, prays for us, and we're, but we're limited. And so you and I have a limit to what we can do. And I would just tell you today that the Holy Spirit of God can do abundantly more than you can do. So if that's true, and we all said it was, then we've got to figure out what does he do and how do I get a hold of that? Everybody agree with that? If he can do more than I can, now unless you just want to be a sloth, a leech on life, a waste of DNA, if you just want to, awesome, don't listen. Tune out, doodle, play on Facebook, play snake on your old not smartphone. Somebody else said you love snake. But... If you want to have an abundant life, some of you guys are bored out of your minds. You, you are bored out of your minds because you're like, if this is all that it is to be a Christian, then I want out. And i got to tell you, if you don't find out about the Holy Spirit, we should. Life, life is boring unless you're listening to God, responding to God, doing what God asks you to do. We had a, a, an occurrence last week. I had an opportunity came across my plate and I said, God, would you just affirm this? An hour later, somebody called me and mentioned the same opportunity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jamie was at work this week, and they've got a position, and uh, we've got a, a person in our life we've been praying for for years for an opportunity for this person, and she said she felt God say this, let them know about, and then gave a name. She said, honey, I've never thought about that, that guy doing this job, and literally she felt God just say to her, give them this name. Studied what his background is, it's a perfect fit for the job opportunity. That's the Holy Spirit of God. And, and it's our decision whether or not we're going to listen to him it's our decision to go you know i want to hear from god or i don't want to hear from god but i will tell you this today the holy spirit offers abundantly more than you could ever do see in the, in the old testament the old testament the holy spirit would show up in moments he would show up like you see samson and it says at the end of samson's life samson had uh disobeyed god and he's standing in the temple and he's been blind you remember samson so strong and it says and the spirit filled him for one last moment he had a moment where the, the spirit fell on him you see the prophets of God, and they would say, and I was in the Spirit. In other words, they'd have a moment, they're living their life. Now, they're God followers, God fears, but the Spirit of God had not decided to dwell in people yet. Now, you go, where was the Holy Spirit? If you read the Old Testament, and we're going to do some studies on it. In the Old Testament, you see pictures of like the Ark of the Covenant. You guys seen Indiana Jones? It's not the best biblical exp exposition of it, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Okay, so the, the Ark of the Covenant is the Ark that God gave people, and it literally housed His presence. Like, why did God do that? He, he gave it as a picture of what was going to come, this picture of better things to come. So the, whole, the, the Ark of the Covenant was this beautiful, um, it looked almost like a throne. It was a box, had these golden angels, and inside of it were se several things, but a couple things were the law, these, these, the Ten Commandments written on stone inside the, the the Ark of the Covenant, and it was God's presence. It was so holy and separate that at some point, some men were moving it. They carried on these long poles because if you touched it, you would, you would die from literally touching God's presence. And it, one of the men stumbled, and a dude reached out to stop it, and because he touched God's presence, he died. Now, I'll, I'll go further with you. In the Old Testament, you have a couple pictures of a, a thing called a tabernacle, which is this outdoor moving tent um, that they would travel around. Uh, Israel was a... a, a kind of a nomad for a while, nomad group of folks. And they had this, this, this tabernacle, and it had these different courts and areas. But inside of all those courts was this place called the, the Holy of Holies. It was where the Ark of the Covenant would sit. Once a year, the priest would go into this, this area, and he would make sacrifice for all the people. Now, the, the story and, and the scripture says that if he hadn't confessed all of his sins, that merely the presence of God would kill him. And you go, how is that even true? Well, there, there, there are stories. It, it, it happened enough where they, were, they would tie a rope to his ankle and put bells on the edge of his garments. Let me tell you what happened. You're the little understudy, and you're sitting, and you're outside. You're like, oh, man, the bells have stopped. I guess Levi didn't confess everything in front of God. And God's holiness that cannot be in the presence of sin, literally the guy just his heart stopped. And they would drag him out. True story. It's in the Scripture. So for us, we're going, man, that's, that's God's presence. How in the world? And that was once a year. Normal people didn't even get to experience God. God was far off. God was scary. God was distant. God was something that you couldn't attain on your own. And yet, the New Testament comes, and Christ becomes incarnate. You're like In Spanish, that means with meat. Christ came to earth, dwelled among us, and said this, God who was far off can now be known. Think about that. 
Think, think about the distance that God moved the relationship from man to him. Man was far off from God before. Only a few select folks had access to God, and even those were scared out of their minds. Can you imagine if it was your turn to be the priest? I would be confessing everybody's sin, including yours. God, I heard Vince say something bad one day. Can, because, and I heard it, and maybe it was wrong. Forgive, forgive my neighbor who I don't even know. I, if I thought that God's presence was going to kill, I would confess every... I, I didn't do it, Lord, but it looked like it'd be fun. I, I would confess because I wouldn't want to die, and you wouldn't want to either. That's where they were, and now the New Testament comes. Christ comes, Christ dies, and when he's leaving the earth, Christ says this. It, this is what's crazy. He says, it's going to be better for you that I'm going to leave you my spirit. Now, I don't understand that. I would have loved to have been a disciple and to watch the miracles, right? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you have loved to see, like, Jesus walking on the water and, and, and feeding of the thousands and the withered hands and the people, Jesus spitting in the mud and rubbing mud? I'm like, that's so cool, the stuff he did. I'd love to have seen it. And Jesus says to us today, it's going to be better for you to have the spirit. Better than, how could it be better? I cried all the Jesus movies. Y'all seen any of the Jesus movies? Even the sappy, always smiling Jesus. I cried at that one. He was awesome. The, the Passion, I can't watch, I boo-hoo all the way through The Passion. That, those movies move me, I'm like, if the Holy Spirit is better, how can it be better? It's better because God says this, you are now the Holy of Holies. I don't get that, I don't understand that, I don't understand how this presence of God could dwell inside of us. You know, we make, the reason we're, we're meeting in a, 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 a rented space is we don't think that a church building sticks, bricks, and mortar is the dwelling place of God. We believe that man is the dwelling place of God. If you said to me, Matt, I've got a 10,000 square foot barn behind my house with air conditioning and chairs. We're coming to your barn next week. Is your barn cheap? Amen. We'll go to your barn. <laughs> we don't really care. We, 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 don't, we don't care that this is a biology lab. We, we don't at all because we don't think for one second that this place, when we're all gone, that when we leave, see, when we leave the place, the church leaves the house. This isn't the church. You're the church. The indwelling presence of God inside of you is the church. In the, Holy, in, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is the agios pneuma. It's the, the holy agios is set apart pneuma, the, the air of the breath of God. In the Old Testament, the word for, for spirit is ruach. It even sounds like you're saying spirit when you say the word. But the spirit of God has decided to live inside of you. So for you today... You asked somebody earlier, do you want more? I just got to ask you, you got to answer this question. Do you want more of what God has to offer you? There are Christians all over the place who are scared to death of God having more. Imagine that their, their life is a little lunch plate of compartments. You know how we don't like our food to touch? You know, the, the old turquoise plates you got at, at grade school. And we've all done that. I don't like my food to touch. My dad's like, it's all going to the same place. Like, blend it all, Dad. Okay, whatever. But you've taken the little corner spot, not the main compartment. That's where the, you know, the square pizza or whatever fits. You've taken the little corner spot, and, and a lot of us have said this, this is God's spot. Well, think about it. I'll go to church on Sundays because that fits in the God spot. Or maybe if I'm really devout, I'll, you know, do something else. And God's saying this like, I'm everything. I'm more than just the plate, your compartments. I want to be in every corner of your life. I want to be, I want to indwell in all that. And God offers more today. It's funny, last week we looked at, at Paul as he talked about the Spirit and how the Spirit moved in his life. And we referenced in Acts 2 where the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. It was a festival time and the Holy Spirit fell and people started speaking in tongues and, and, and speaking the good news of Jesus to people who didn't speak the, the same language and what we're looking at today is an interesting, it's a prophecy about that. It's pretty awesome. Pretty cool how God lined this all up. And it's in Ezekiel. I'll, I'll set this up for you. Ezekiel 36. Israel had this long history of, uh, they were God's people, of disobeying God and God punishing them. If you're a child of God and you start messing up and you get punished, don't question where it comes from. Good parents discipline their children. Uh, if you have children and you don't discipline them, you're not a good parent. Um, they need discipline. Now, when you see my son with his skint knees and elbows, that is not the discipline. That's him tripping on concrete. He's fine around pillows and carpet. They get him around concrete. But every, every good parent disciplines their children. And for you, just like Israel, there are going to be times you're going to obey God and you're going to be where you should be. And there are going to be times you don't obey God. And God gently is going to bring you back to him through discipline. Israel, the story of Israel to me is a story of obey God, be blessed, get distracted, disobey God, and get spread out. 
It's happened all over all the place. It's happened multiple times. Uh, but one of these times, uh, Israel was f- from the, away from the land God had promised them. And, and a prophet named Ezekiel came along. Is, prophets always, they were the voice of God to people. The presence of God came on them. They wrote down God's words. And they would say, thus saith the Lord, thus speaketh God. And, that, and people would listen. The prophets were usually pretty scary guys. Because God would always accompany the words with action. Like you hear about Elijah and the prophets of Baal in the Bible. And it was like hundreds of prophets of Baal against Elijah. And they couldn't do anything. Elijah calls fire from heaven, long story short, and God shows up. And so the prophets were these scary dudes. Everybody respected but wasn't really sure what to do with. But they had folks' attention. And Ezekiel was one of those prophets. And in Ezekiel 36, he speaks to the people as they're far off from God. And this is a prophecy about what's going to happen in the future. This was thousands of years ago. And this is what he says, and it's talking about the Holy Spirit. So it's interesting today that we're going to look at the Old Testament to find out about what the Holy Spirit does for us today. So let's look at this together. I'm going to read through it, then we'll talk about it together. Ezekiel 36, and if you've got your Bibles, uh, verse 24 through 28. And this is God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. He says, I will take you from the nations, they're all over the place, and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. Remember, God had a promised land for the Israelites that uh, they didn't have faith to take, and so God let them wander in the desert for 40 years. Um, and if you go right now, the other night, I met a, a, a waitress. Uh, the Camerons and I and Jamie were at dinner. We met a waitress who says, I'm Palestinian. I'm like, I don't need to tell you about Jesus because you'll get really mad. Palestinians are living in a land that's not theirs. It's the Jewish people's land. God gave it to them. So that's the land. Verse 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you. This is God to Israel. And you will be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. This is God speaking about what he's going to do. Verse 26, this is beautiful words. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Verse 28. And you shall dwell in the land that I, give to your, that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This is God speaking to people. Now, we, we listen to it. It's air conditioned. We're sitting in comfortable padded chairs. These are folks who are spread all over the planet. The formal word is the diaspora. They were, they were dispersed all over the earth, far from their culture, far from their homeland, they, they felt like they were under God's judgment, and they were under God's judgment. But God says this, it's not, if you will follow me, I will make things right. I'm going to do it through my spirit. Fast forward through Jesus comes, Jesus lives. Perfect example of, of a Christian life. Perfect example of communing with God. Uh, is, is crucified for us for our sins on the cross. God poured all of our sins on Christ. Christ held them up with his shoulders, was separated from God, paid the penalty for us, was resurrected on the third day, promising us eternal life if we would trust in him. Is resurrected, comes back, and just to keep on teaching what he'd been teaching, makes hundreds of appearances to hundreds of people for a period of time, and then he ascends to heaven and says this, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes a little while later at this festival, falls on people, and it changes everything. The church is instantly launched. It goes from 120 to 150 folks to 3,000 people in an afternoon. Instantly. Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit falls on us, things happen. We go like, oh, it was a good service day. The Holy Spirit was there. If the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, things change. I heard a, a preacher say the other day, I was listening to a sermon about this, and he, this guy interviewed this old preacher, and he said, what's the, the biggest, craziest thing the Holy Spirit's ever said to you? And I told this story this week. And the old preacher said, well, I was driving down the road one day, going to get some barbecue, and the Holy Spirit of God told me to stop and go inside of a house. And the, the, the young preacher's like, hey, is that a, a friend's house? He goes, no, I've never been in that house before. They're like, oh, okay. He said, so I stopped, never been in the house before, and I knocked on the door, and the door kind of cracked open. And I looked around the corner, and there was a guy with his wife. He had her, he was choking her, had a gun to her head. He said, and i never seen him before in my life. And the young preacher's like, well, what did you do? He goes, I tackled him and got the gun out of his hands. Well, what happened then? Well, he got arrested, and the, and the wife... Asked me why I came, and I told her about Jesus, and she became a Christian. He's like, what? And the guy goes, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Well, if any of you had that story, I mean, WSFA would be at your house, and, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. He does things that are beyond us. 
I had a professor that would say, people always say revival broke out in our, in our church. And he would say if revival broke out, which is the Holy Spirit of God running rampant. He goes, if revival broke out, the people driving down I-85 would come to AUM and stop and come in here. And they would go, I have no idea why I'm here. Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit does what he wants. And Megan said it really well. We have the option of allowing. Now, that, that blows my mind because God is sovereign. God could put all of you on your faces right now if he wanted to. He can do whatever he wants to. But in, in his gentleness, he chooses to interact with us and ask us, do you want more of me? Now, I want to show you some things that the Holy Spirit does, but they're all hinging on whether or not you will, and I hate to even say the word let, that seems like a bad word, if you will invite them in. They're all hinging on our availability. See, because God will move on and find somebody less talented, less good looking than you and do more. It's very humbling to us, isn't it? But I'm a good speaker, so, so what? There's a guy named David Ring who can hardly speak and he leads hundreds of thousands of people to Jesus all the time. He has cystic fibrosis, he, his body's withered up and he's one of the best evangelists you'll ever hear. He can't speak at all. So here, here are some things that this scripture tells us that God wants to do. Number one, through the Spirit, God wants to draw us home. Some of you today would say, man, I don't even know why I'm here today. Well, you know why you're here? Because the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you home. How many of you would say in your salvation story, things happen that you didn't even ask to happen? Anybody besides me? I wasn't seeking. People said sometimes I wasn't seeking God, but my life started crumbling and falling apart. And God's saying this, I'm getting you to the end of your rope, so there are no options except for me. That's what God does. The Holy Spirit in verse 24, it says, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all over the countries and bring you into your own land. Your own land is home. Now, how many of you, you just love being home? I love being home. I got my TV like I like it. I love being home. I got, it's just like I like it. Everybody, you've got a spot on your couch. Or your, how, many of you get, how many of you men have a wonderful recliner? Vince, you've got a good recliner, don't you? Don't you love it? Doesn't it? It just fits your butt perfectly. You have, over time, it is sculpted to you. Gravity and girth have taken care of it. It's her, it's her, her, it's her recliner. So, so here's, we all love being home. Let me tell you what, what's cool about the Holy Spirit of God. There are people today, we've been asking you, hey, hey, invite them tonight. Tonight is going to be uber powerful, by the way. God has spoken some things, given us some things. It, it is going to blow your minds. If you don't go today and find somebody to invite, you are saying this, I don't want you to go home. The very best thing I can do for people is not preach to them, is not put my arm around them, not be a good ear to listen to or write them notes or Facebook messages. The very best thing I can do for any of you guys and all your friends and their friends is to say this, here is my king and he's way better than me. Nights like tonight are invitations for you to come sit with the king. When we give you these invitations, please don't let this be trash. Go find somebody today. I sent an email out to you this week talking about invitations. The, the number one statistic that I'll remember, it says that 67% of friends and family will, will come to a church with an invitation. Now, if you're in sales, I'll give you an instance. I've been doing some internet marketing. And in internet marketing, 1% click-through rate is phenomenal. That's like, you're going to be a squillionaire. 1%. That means you send out 100 emails, and one person might click on it. They say 67% of people, two out of every three people, if you invite them, will come. And we're selfish, and we go, no, I know the Holy Spirit's drawing. He says he's even give people a whole country, but I'm not going to invite my waitress because I'm scared. Who knows if she's the one or two out of three? For you, before you even wanted to know God, God was drawing you home. I don't know what your theology is, but the Bible says that God draws people. For some of you today... You're, you're not fully with God, but you're on the road, and God's kind of drawing you, and you're feeling him presence, and you're feeling him draw you, and he's calling your name, and you're getting closer to saying yes. That's what Catalyst is about. We want to be of church. We just talked about it in our one-on-one class. For folks who don't like church, people that are far from God, far from home, people who have been hurt by church, people who have been mistreated by people under the banner of Jesus. There's a lot of, been, a lot of really bad stuff happened under the banner of Jesus. We just kind of want to be that place, place of healing. We want to be home. And the Holy Spirit does this. Second thing, the Holy Spirit makes us clean. Now, we clean up and come in here, but none of us bear our souls, right? Look at what Scripture says. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from what? All of your uncleannesses. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. Now, without you confessing your particular sin, how many of you would agree this is good news? 
you are not cognizant of your sin. How many of you would agree, because we're all rotten, that this is good news? This is good news. This is good news because guilt and sin is a horrible thing and some of us walk around and we're carrying it and the Holy Spirit wants to come in and clean you up. There are people today that you are literally paralyzed because you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to make that stuff all go away. There's nothing you have done that God can't trump. Nothing. If Jeffrey Dahmer, before he died, had called on Jesus, that cannibalistic murderer had called on Christ, he'd have been forgiven. If Hitler, in that bunker, in the middle of Germany, and bombs all around him, and fire all around him, if he had said this, I was wrong, I, can, I need Jesus, it is beyond my even mind, Christ would have said this, I died for you too, Adolf Hitler. Now, I don't, in my flesh, I don't want that. Neither do you. Let him get punished. Well, his punishment is the same as what my punishment should have been. And God today says this to you, and it says to me, I will sprinkle you with clean water, and I will clean you up. If we allow him. All of you in this room know someone who is stuck in a moment in time, right? The thing happened, whatever the thing was, and they've never moved on to it. See, uncleannesses can be things that we do, because we do a lot of stuff willingly. It can also be stuff that's been done to us. And, and, and the Holy Spirit says to us, I will make you clean. Whether you played in the mud on your own or whether somebody threw you in the mud, I will make you clean. I love it in my life as I'm listening to the Spirit. There are things that don't have the sparkle and charm that they used to because he's cleaning me up. He's making my heart clean. There are things that I've looked over and winked at in the past that he's making really, really strong, apparent to me that he doesn't want me to be involved in anymore. He's cleaning me up. So we get saved and we get cleaned up in this process. And that's what he does. Number three, he transplants our hearts. He transplants our hearts. It says in verse 26, I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit and I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Here's the, what we've tried to do. We try to clean up our hearts and God says this, you need a new heart. Everything you do is because you want to, right? Right? Jamie and I always laugh when people go out in town and you see them wearing crazy stuff. They're like, they think they look good. Right? Anybody been to the Alabama National Fair this year? Other morning I woke up singing that song like, what is wrong with me? Okay, you go to the fair and people are like, they get dressed up for the fair. I want to eat me a red velvet funnel cake. I saw somebody eating a red velvet funnel cake. That sounds awesome. People go to the fair and you look at them and you go, man, they think they look good. They chose to wear that. They chose to. Go to peoplewalmart.com, okay? That's a crazy, everybody's been there before. They, they think they're looking good. You do exactly what you want to do. And so this idea of I'm going to get morally better never works, right? Never works because our desire center has to change. It has to change. See, because if not, you're just going to turn over a new leaf, but where, where the decisions are made, still the same old heart. And God says this, I know about your hearts. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. So instead of just helping you try to fix your old heart, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you because I'm going to help you even change where your desires come from. Now, don't get specifics, but how many of you that are Christ followers would say this? Since you follow Jesus, that you have a new set of desires. You feel different desires. Anybody? That's, that's proof of God. Proof of God. You see, you see people that, are, that trade all the, the glamour of the world to say, I'm going to follow Jesus and do what God says for me to do. Every time, every time you tithe or give or volunteer, it's you saying this. I have a new heart now. My old desires were selfish. My old desires were all for me. My new desires are because of my new heart. So we don't need to just take a, have a better, uh, a better diet or eat some, some vitamins, some supplements. We need new hearts. And the Holy Spirit says this, when you become a believer, I will give you a new heart. Therefore, your desires change and, and the things you get passionate about change. I never, ever dreamt I would be doing this in my life. This was not my desire for my life. It's God's desire for my life. Because he gave me a new heart. Same thing for you. Number four, he gives us guidance. And I don't mean like GPS guidance. I was thinking about the, the, uh, the episode of The Office where, where Dwight and, and uh, Michael were using the GPS and it drove them into a lake. You remember that one? And it says, go straight and go straight. And it says to go straight and they literally drove into a lake. I don't mean that kind of guidance. I don't mean like poor guidance or ill-informed guidance. I mean, when the Holy Spirit, in verse 20, says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful 
to obey my rules. When Megan talked about the Holy Spirit speaking her heart this week, there are times in my life that the God speaks like that, and he says, don't do this. Don't do this. See, it would be mean, I think, of God to require me to do these things, but not give me the guidance to do them. With Hudson, we help him obey. Have you guys had little ones at some point in your life? Did you just thrash them every time they disobeyed you? No, you're not in jail. You'd be in jail if you did that. But you guide them. If we ask him, do you need to go to the bathroom? And he says, no. We know he does because he's doing that little dance that little boys do. You know, a little squirmy thing. And so we walk him. We guide him to obey us. Holy Spirit does the same thing. For you, a sign that the Holy Spirit's growing in you, that you're listening, is that you're learning how to better walk in the statutes and obey the commands of God. Okay, number five, he gives us rest. How many guys would say you get tired? Anybody? Some of you are tired right now. I don't just mean physically. Some of you would say this, matter. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally, I'm spiritually worn out. I've been trying to make God happy. I've been trying to, to, to make God the center of my life. And God would say today through his spirit, look at this verse. It says, you shall dwell in the land. This is their, their promised land. You shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. If you obey me, I will give you this place of rest. For us, to walk in the Spirit means no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, that we can say this, I can find rest in the Spirit of God. No matter what's going on in my family, no matter what decisions are being made, no matter how great work is going or bad work is going, no matter how much money is in the bank account, no matter how, much, how many bills came in, this trumps all that to say this, I have found my rest, my peace in God. And, and I don't know if you're there or not, but if you, if you are there, it is so much better than what the world offers to find rest in God alone. There are people that are in horrible situations, and they, they can exist and, and have victory over it because they found that the Holy Spirit can guide you and give you rest in those things. For you, if I could give you something this week, I would say, listen to the Holy Spirit as he commands you, and then find your rest in him. Find your rest in him. You're not going to find it in, in me or even your small group. You're going to find it ultimately in what he's saying to you. And the last thing we'll say today is this. The best thing the Holy Spirit gives us is he gives us himself. Old Testament, God was far off. God was intermittent with his people. He would come in at moments for certain people. And now Acts comes along. The Holy Spirit says, I will indwell in you. I will, I will be the seal of your salvation. And now we have God himself inside of us. It's weird, that makes sense to us. 28, it says, You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This isn't God far off. This is intimacy. This is relationship. This is, this is adoption. This is somebody saying this, You are far off and orphans by yourself, but I bring you into my family. I have a, a friend, and, and Kyle's friends with them too, named Brent Buchanan, that they just adopted a little boy from uh, Columbia. And um, Jake mentioned it one day. If you ever hear people that are adopting, they, they use the term forever family. You ever heard that term with people that are adopting? Let me tell you what, that's actually, it has a, a legal partner. But in adoption, when Jake and Denise adopted Samuel, their little boy, they were here back in, I think, April. When they adopted him, the judge looked at them and said this, any parent in this room, you can disown your child, your biological child. You can call the state. And say this, I'm not going to be a good parent. I don't have the resources to take care of this kid. Or you can even say, this is horrible. I don't want them. You can say that. Every person in the room can. And the state, your child becomes a, uh, a ward of the state. In adoption, you don't have that option. The law says that you are forever tied to that child. Brent and Becky picked this little boy. They had to stay in Columbia for like a month and a half or something. Cute little kid, guys, cute kid. And uh, he was born with a heart defect, and they fixed him. And, and uh, good-looking little guy. And, and they keep men mentioning that he's in their forever family now. And it reminds me, just like you, that when, when you're a follower of Christ, you have been adopted into a forever family. The Bible says that God can't disown us because he can't disown himself. In other words, we've been brought in. Our DNA has been changed. Your blood type has been changed. You're not just you anymore. You're a child of the king. And, and he gives us, to follow up with that, he gives us his Holy Spirit. And so my prayer today is that you would learn to listen to the, to the Holy Spirit and walk with him. I'll give you a story before we go. 
a friend of mine named Dane was a pastor in Birmingham, and he had a son who got into everything. You've ever heard this heard a story, this kind of kid, everything. And um, and Dane said, I would I would punish him, I would take away his car, and he hated not having his car, but it didn't change. Like afterwards, he'd be the same kid that he was. And uh, he said, I we he said we'd take all the stuff out of his room that he wanted. You know, you just at a at a parent, you're at wit's end. Some of you guys have been there or know people who are there. Kid's 17 years old, and he said he came in drunk one night. And, he, and Dane, this guy's a preacher. He's like, I could lose my job. And this kid's doing stuff that's illegal. He's going to get himself killed. And, uh, and his son, he was so just messed up and angry at his son. He said, I'll just deal with you in the morning. Put him in bed. And, and Dane said, um, the next morning, it was a Saturday morning. He said, um, the Lord told me to do something, the Holy Spirit. He said, it's crazy. And, I, and I, he was telling me the story firsthand. I said, what did God tell you to do? He said, God told me to punish my son, take away everything. And tell him that the only way he could get his stuff back is if he beat me with a belt. I said, Dane, your son probably, he'd probably like to wear you out, brother. I don't, I don't know if that's a good decision or not. He said, God told me to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm like, oh. So get this straight. Your son's on restriction, car, you know, phone, family, friends, everything's off. Until what? He goes, until my son gives me the punishment that I said he deserved. I said, what is that? He goes, it's, it's 10 licks with a belt. I'm like, that's weird. Now, anybody, I've never read this in a book before. Have you ever read this in a book? Most kids would wear the, I'll give you 20. And he said, I told my son that, and my son cussed me. He said, you're blankety blank crazy, Dad. He said, know this, you're, you don't have your car, you don't have anything until you do this. 10 licks. He said, Sunday happened. My son wouldn't do it. Monday happened, Tuesday happened, Wednesday. He says, two and a half weeks happened. The kid's life is shut down. Like, come home from school and sit in his room. Nothing. Silence. He said, my son came to me and he said, um, I'm ready to, to do this. He said, and my son, when he swings that belt back, he had the hardest heart. Hated God. Hated people. Hated me. Lived for rebellion. And he said, the first leg wasn't hard enough. I told him that one didn't count. He said, and God broke my son. He's sobbing. He's confessing things I never even knew he did. Like one, two. He said, by the time number 10 came, my son was a heap on the floor. Broken. Crying. Dad, I'm so sorry for all the stuff I've done to you. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? He says, and my son said this, I need to know Christ. I think this is what he did for us. And Dane said this. He goes, Matt, I, I could have missed the Holy Spirit telling me to do that. He said, my whole son's life changed at a response to me and the Holy Spirit. And, and for you, your life changed when you responded to the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christ follower, whether you see it or not, the Holy Spirit was moving orchestrating things, changing things, drawing you home. But for us now, here's where the, it goes further. For us now, we have to recognize that he wants to do more than we can do. And we have to say this, and I'm raising my hand because I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of whatever's next. That's what Catalyst is. Catalyst is us saying this. We know it's work. We know it's hard. We know we're going to have to sacrifice and and some of us, God's going to call us to give way more than 10% because we can and we need to. Some of us are going to say, I can't, I, I got to serve, I got to do something. But here's what God's saying to this. There's a phenomenal opportunity for the next group of folks. And for us, it's only going to happen by the Holy Spirit of God. My invitation to you, one, is if you don't know Christ, to know him and receive this Holy Spirit. That's the first thing. But for the vast majority of us, because I've talked to almost all y'all in this room, for the vast majority of us, you would say this, Matt, I know Jesus, and I would say this, ask the Holy Spirit for more. Does everybody agree there's more out there? There's a deeper level of obedience. There's a louder voice in your mind. There's, there's more that he wants to do, and it's not that we need more of God. Here's the flip. He just needs more of us. And he doesn't even need us. He wants more of us. And to do this, he is going to use more of us. So I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to pray for two things. I'm going to pray one for you if you don't know Christ. 
And, and if you don't, I pray you would confess him. I pray you'd say, I need you to forgive me of my sin. I need you to move my life. If that's you, pray that prayer. If you are, have done that and you say this, God, I just, I just want to follow you closer. I want more of your spirit. Then I dare you to pray with me and say, God, use me more. I want more of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to listen to what he's saying to do. And I would love tonight for everybody to come back and say this. I listened and I brought this person. This is crazy math, but if everybody brought one, we'd double. Woo! It's not common core. One plus one. Okay. We all, it would double. It would double. And there are people that need to sit right there in front of you that need to experience God. That's the challenge for today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, the blessing of your word. Thank you so much that scripture says that, that Christ um, came and lived for us and died for us. And God, for anybody in this room that has not given uh, their sin over to you, who has not confessed their need for, for salvation, I pray for them, Lord, that you would accept them right now, that they would confess their need. They'd say, Father, forgive me of my sin. God, they'd confess their, their uh, rebellion. They'd confess that they, they, in the past, have thought they could do it on their own. And God, I pray today that they would say, Father, make me a Christian. Make me a Christ follower. God, help us to repent of our sin and, and turn to you. So God, if anybody did that today, I pray, Lord, that they would make it clear to us Mark that card, find one of us afterwards so we could pray with them. But God, for most of us who are people who would say, I know Jesus, but I don't really feel like I'm living in the Spirit. I pray, Father, that we would know and remember your word says we have been given the Spirit when we became saved. And that God, for us, it's a matter of saying, I want the abundance of what God has for me. So Father, I pray for us that we would listen, that we would obey you, that we'd learn what your voice sounds like above all the noise. Father, we'd learn to test it against Scripture, but when we know it's you... God, I pray we wouldn't be scared or fearful, but that we would simply obey you. So, Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for these wonderful songs that point us to you. And, Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that is our constant guide, our seal, the, the sign of our inheritance. And, um, Lord, I pray you just be with us today. I pray you bless tonight. God, I pray for there to be hundreds of folks who don't know you tonight, that, that are here tonight. God, I pray there be people that, that we invited today. God, I pray for my friend Stephanie that her trip would be cut short and that she'd be here tonight. That is not on her plans. But Father, I pray she'd be here. Lord, I pray she could be here. And Lord, I ask that you do all this for your name's sake and for the kingdom. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, in just a minute, the guys are going to come around with the buckets. We do want to encourage you, if you feel so inclined, to support what we're doing here financially. But the one offering we would ask for everybody, we would ask everyone to give us back this connection.